Today I'm going to show you my quick, super sloppy, great for run and gun way of making sure that my videos are exposed properly every single time. So let's just start off by telling you that I am a huge fan of zebras. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, yeah, right, all right. These kinds of zebras are very, very nice, but no, what I'm talking about is these kinds of zebras. Why? because those zebras make exposing my videos a million times easier. Even if your on-camera monitor sucks and you know that I'm a huge fan of the A7C and the ZV-1, but good lord, the monitor is not accurate. And zebras? Zebras don't lie. Before I just jump right into the settings though, you need to kind of understand what some of these numbers mean. Now what I know is the numbers listed correspond with IRE but I don't know how to explain that to you, so let me see if I can look something up that can. Here's what I found. The IRE is a unit used in measurement of composite video signals. Its name is derived from the initials of the Institute of Radio Engineers. A value of 100 IRE. So in a nutshell, IRE is a unit for measuring light in video, I think. But this super famous black and white photographer, Ansel Adams, really had a handle on all of this, and he created a chart that helps explain all of this IRE business in a language that is easier for normal humans to understand. He's divided those different levels of light into zones. Zero being black, totally devoid of color, all the way up to 10 being completely white, totally blown out, no color left in the image. And if you look at some of the zones in between, you'll see that these zones actually match up with things like stone and wood. And there's also a lot of talk about skin tones in there, which is really important to us. Add a zero to each of those zone numbers and they'll match up with a zebra level. Now you can really get super, super technical about this stuff, but for me, I only really care about two things. Am I personally going to be overexposed or for that matter, any people that I'm going to be filming? Or if I'm not in the shot, is the subject that I'm filming properly exposed and are there any overly exposed areas in my shot? So if I'm filming myself, knowing that I would fall probably somewhere in between level six and seven on the scale with my average to light Caucasian skin, I like to set mine actually at a custom setting of 65 plus or minus five. And I do this because, yeah, I'm kind of in a middle range, but also it's a really nice catch-all for other things. I can use it for a wider range of people and it gives me a little bit more wiggle room. So let's take a look at how it actually works, okay? If my zebras are turned on and I don't see any zebras on the screen, that either means that my settings are too dark or too light. So I'm gonna adjust them. So I'm just gonna kinda adjust my ISO here and look, you see them start to appear. Anything with stripes is in my custom 65 zone. And for this method, I just want the natural kind of highlights on my skin to be striped. And as a personal preference, I don't like it as much when it's a huge chunk that's highlighted. I like to dial it back just a little bit so it's selected areas like my cheekbones and the bridge of my nose. I think it makes my skin look healthier. And ladies, you're gonna really understand this. You will see that if you dial it back just a little bit, it's gonna give your skin a really dewy, natural glow. Okay, so what if I'm not filming myself? Well, that 65 setting is also pretty useful for other things. You can use it for highlight on wood, some foliage, some stone. And you can also use the guide for reference if you want to get really dialed in. But the other way that I'll do it is by setting my zebras to 100. Anything with zebras right now is totally blown out with no color data. So if I'm filming a sky with clouds, I'll bring my exposure up so that I can see some zebras and then I'll lower it back down just until there are none on screen and I know that nothing is blown out. Use your best judgment here though. You've got a whole lot more wiggle room with zebras if you're doing photography because there are so many more post-processing options as well as the opportunity to shoot raw. But when you're doing video, you're gonna have a lot less wiggle room when it comes to color correcting later. So do yourself a favor and make sure that you're exposing for the most important thing in your clip. If you have to choose between your subject being super dark and all of your highlights being blown out, well, you're gonna need to make that sacrifice and choose your subject. Also, depending on the picture profile that you're using, you might have a little more wiggle room, which is one of the reasons that I love HLG2 so much. Speaking of HLG, Click the video that I've got up on screen if you want to check out my custom picture profile that's going to help you get rid of all of those nasty yellow color issues on the A7C and the ZV-1. And I will see you next week.